This is a list of the most in-demand cybersecurity jobs, their salaries, and what they actually do on a day-to-day -day basis. This list of the most in-demand cybersecurity jobs is based on a cybersecurity skills gap report that basically asks companies which cybersecurity roles are you hiring for the most. And in this video, we'll be going over their answers. Some of the roles on this list you've likely heard of and others are a bit more niche. So be sure to watch to the end of this video to see if any of these jobs sound interesting to you. All right, number one on this list is a common one and for good reason, and that is a cybersecurity engineer. Cybersecurity engineers make on average a salary of about $101,000 per year in the US. Now at a very high level, a cybersecurity engineer is someone who builds the cybersecurity infrastructure, tooling, systems, and overall architecture that help prevent cybersecurity attacks and threats. And while a cybersecurity engineer is a technical role, that doesn't mean that you also aren't working on building out cybersecurity protocols, documentation, playbooks, anything that'll help the overall cybersecurity infrastructure and program at your company. This is one of the most common cybersecurity roles out there. Many of them come from different backgrounds, whether it be pen testing, blue teaming, or even software engineering. And one of the biggest reasons for this is because of the fact that you spend a lot of time not only building out security infrastructure or giving guidance to, let's say, the development team on how to securely build a certain tool, or even reviewing any system vulnerabilities that may be impacting any of your internal tools or even from third-party vendors. Cybersecurity engineers may also be working hand-in-hand -hand with IT teams, SRE, development teams, even legal and privacy depending on the projects that you're working on, especially when it comes to evaluating any new vulnerabilities or even new software that the company is onboarding, even new compliance requirements that the company has to follow because cybersecurity engineers are typically the ones with the most in-depth knowledge of how the system is running and the kinds of changes that need to be made to implement certain regulatory or compliance needs. Now, whenever I talk about cybersecurity engineers, you also can't forget about cybersecurity analysts. And both of these roles really do work hand in hand, but the easy way to remember things is that a cybersecurity engineer typically builds out the systems, architecture, any technical processes, while the cybersecurity analyst is using those tools and using them to keep the organization safe or to help mitigate any cyber attacks. And of course, a cybersecurity analyst also happens to be on the list of the most in-demand cybersecurity jobs, and not to mention one of the most entry-level roles in cybersecurity. So a cybersecurity analyst, or AKA an InfoSec analyst, or even sometimes called an SOC analyst. Every company has little nuances to how they name their roles, but Essentially, it's someone who is entry level and analyzing any kind of data, logs, anomalies, anything that comes in from any data source that has to do with cybersecurity and attacks and breaches. That is what a cybersecurity analyst does. The average salary for an InfoSec or a cybersecurity analyst is about $80,000 per year in the US. And as you can see, based on the difference between cybersecurity engineer salaries and cybersecurity analysts, this is primarily because a cybersecurity analyst is one of the most common roles for entry level cybersecurity professionals. I also started my career in a cybersecurity rotational program, but if you had to whittle it down to a specific title, then my role was closest to a security analyst. And as a security analyst, you can be working on many different things. There are security analysts that are more specialized, like SOC analysts, who are basically security operations center analysts. They essentially look for any suspicious activity through SIM logs, through different anomalies, through different alerts that may trigger, through any incidents or tickets that a user may submit. So there's a lot of different ways that an SOC analyst or a security analyst can be alerted for certain things to look into. Oftentimes there could be false positives or maybe you do a lot of digging and you find that there's nothing really that serious or maybe it's something that was risk accepted, which means the company is okay with that specific risk. Typically, the smaller the company, the more likely the security analyst is working on many different things. Similar to security engineers, they could be working with the sales team, HR, legal, privacy, especially when it comes to security reporting. And if they're researching a specific incident, they may reach out to different teams for different answers. If you're working at a bigger company, then your team may have a lot more people and you may only own a very small portion of security logs or incidents to look into. Maybe it's only the logs from a specific tool that the company uses internally or something very niche like that. And that is why the work that spans for an analyst type role is very wide. And that is typically how people in their early career can decide which area of cybersecurity is most interesting to them, whether it be digital forensics or red teaming or blue teaming or cryptography. There's so many different areas that a security analyst will touch at a high level. And it's basically up to you which areas you're most interested in to be able to move your career forward. And number three on this list is a network security architect who make an average salary of about $126,000 per year in the US. Now, this is definitely a much higher jump from our last roles that we've talked about, but do know that this 
this is definitely a more senior role. I would say something closer to an entry-level equivalent for this would be an IT networking role or a network security role or even a sysadmin role. Even starting your career in IT help desk and getting familiar with networking concepts and, and foundational networking skills can help you a lot to eventually get to a network security architecture role. Essentially, a network security architect focuses on improving the security strength of enterprise architecture, defining any specific networking policies or procedures, and even potentially help train users and admins. Because this is definitely a more senior level role, you could be the one coming up with the playbooks that more junior people on your team are using. If you think of all the companies out there that have Wi-Fi, that have a private network, that maybe have a guest network for anyone who visits the office, that has a work from home capabilities for their employees to be able to access internal resources from their home or anywhere outside of the office, this all comes down to a network security architect. They're basically there to ensure that the network is running smoothly for employees, for customers, any other stakeholders to be able to access your company's resources and online portals and data, et cetera. And this also means regular maintenance. This also means security improvements for any patches or any new technologies that may come up. This means keeping an eye out for any vulnerabilities that may apply to any technology, whether it be infrastructure or software or firmware that your company is using for their network setup. And if you can imagine if the network went down for a company and employees were no longer able to access internal resources, that is a pretty big issue. And another reason why this role is so important. In fact, for anyone going into cybersecurity, I would highly recommend getting some skills in networking. I do have a free training that I can recommend you from Juniper Networks, and it's basically their open learning program where you can learn the basics of IT, of networking, network security, and it is all free. So I highly recommend checking it out. I'll have a link to it in my description. All the training itself is free, but if you want to get officially certified, once you complete the training, it's like 75% off. So again, you don't have to get the certification but it's a nice credential to be able to add onto your resume anyway. And even if you don't get the certification, you can still take advantage of their free IT and networking training. Okay, so before we continue, there is one more important thing I want to talk about. As the holiday season approaches, it's the perfect time to reflect on the important things like family, your health, and staying secure online. As you prepare for gatherings and gift giving, don't forget about securing your digital life too. Managing your passwords and account information may not seem very festive, but it's essential for your peace of mind and safety, especially when you're gearing up for Black Friday and Cyber Monday shopping. And that's where Keeper Security comes in. Keeper makes it easy to create and securely store your passwords in a personal password manager that you can access anytime, anywhere, on any device. Whether you're planning holiday shopping or anything else during this holiday season, Keeper keeps your passwords and accounts protected around the clock. Use Keeper's built-in password generator to generate strong, unique passwords for all of your holiday shopping accounts. Then you can use Keeper Fill to automatically fill in your credentials on any device when you log into your accounts. Make your holiday season smoother and more secure with Keeper and get 50% off at keeper.io slash with Sandra. Keeper also offers a 30-day free trial using the link in my description to help you get started. Thank you again to Keeper for sponsoring today's video. All right, number four on this list is a security software developer. This is a perfect role for someone who is not only interested in cybersecurity, but they're also interested in software engineering, aka coding. Typically, security software developers focus primarily on application security, which means you have knowledge about the OWASP top 10, you have knowledge about AppSec, you have knowledge about about how to harden software applications, whether it be mobile or web applications, which are likely going to be the two most common platforms that you'll focus on as a security software developer. Personally, before I started my career in cybersecurity, I was also focused primarily in software engineering. And I will say that definitely helped a lot when it came to applying to any cybersecurity job, if I'm being honest. Even in my first job in a cybersecurity rotational program, while I was mostly working on security analyst type work, I also had a side project, if you will, where I basically worked on a network security application and I was coding with about 30 to 40 percent of my time and that was my first time delving into the world of security software development so honestly I do think that it is a very lucrative career especially if you are interested in coding but can't choose between you know software development and cybersecurity this is a great mesh of those two jobs. Even in my last role as an InfoSec analyst, because I had my coding background, I was also brought in to lead a project on my team that focused specifically on the software development lifecycle and, and making sure that we were doing everything we could to push not only good code, but secure good code. And that is something that can't be overstated, especially with all of the security breaches that we've seen in the last year, even in the last few months. And honestly, it is hard to find talent that not only has cybersecurity skills and knowledge, but also has coding skills because these two areas don't often overlap, especially because they kind of tend to stick to their own respective jobs. But if you're a cybersecurity professional who also has coding skills, 
Trust me, that is a very, very lucrative area to go into, especially if you're working for a company that focuses on SaaS products or, or any kind of web application where their main product is to interface with their users and customers. And not to mention that another area that is emerging is the need for security software developers in the IoT space. So if you're interested in internet of things devices or smart homes, smart devices, things like Alexa and Google Home, again, that is a great area to potentially go into in your career. A security software developer makes on average in the US about $75,000 per year. If you're looking for a cybersecurity bootcamp, the one that I recommend is the Springboard Cybersecurity Bootcamp that also has a job guarantee if you qualify. And basically, if you don't get a job within a certain amount of time after graduating from the bootcamp, you'll get your full tuition back. And they also help prepare you for the CompTIA Security Plus that has a comprehensive technical cybersecurity curriculum for anyone who is just starting out as a beginner. You don't need any previous experience in cybersecurity or in tech. You'll get one-on-one -on -one mentorship and career guidance with hands-on cybersecurity training and projects. If you're interested, you can also get $1,000 off the entire bootcamp using my code with Sandra and through the link in my description. Next up on this list is a penetration tester or an ethical hacker who make an average salary of about $92,000 per year in the US. Now this one is probably self-explanatory. I'm sure you've all seen the memes and videos of hackers, even from movies where it's basically some person in a hoodie and typing away at their laptop in a basement or in the back of a van somewhere and they're just pressing a bunch of buttons and suddenly they're in. I wouldn't necessarily say that that's exactly how hacking is, but it's definitely the media's portrayal of what hackers actually do. But getting realistic with you, yes, half of the job is hacking into a web application in one of my last companies because I was working at a bank. They've also hacked into ATMs. so. Very, very cool stuff, honestly. And obviously I'm not at that level, but I did have red teaming mentors on the ethical hacking team who did a lot of this stuff hands-on and going through and reading their pen test reports afterwards is always a very interesting read, which goes into the second half of the job as a pen tester, which is the reports and the documentation. Because I feel like everyone really talks about the hacking part of being an ethical hacker, but half of it is also writing that very fancy pen test report, which is the final deliverable of your pen test. They typically are documenting every single thing that they do, whether it be through breadcrumbs, screenshots, any kind of notes that they're keeping, wherever they're keeping them. Because once you're done the pen test, you're going to have to provide this to the development team or the stakeholder or the customer, whoever it is that you're doing this hack for, to show them, hey, this is what I exploited. These are the vulnerable parts. These are the steps to recreate this and some recommendations for mitigating that vulnerability. Vulnerability. I've seen pen test reports that go up to 50, 100 pages long. And back then we didn't even have AI tools like we do today. So I'm sure nowadays it's easier and I'm sure there's AI automation for this. A lot of this is manual writing and it takes a very long time, especially because pen testers typically are the kinds of people who like doing and not necessarily documentation and writing. But to be a good pen tester, ethical hacker, you need to have both of those skills. And you could be a highly skilled ethical hacker and hack into multiple machines in 24 hours for your OSCP exam. But if you're not able to document it, you're gonna fail the exam anyway. And that is an important part of pen testing that I want every potential pen tester to know. The documentation, the reporting is very, very important in your job and definitely something you should consider when going into the specific field. It's nice to know ahead of time what to actually expect on the job not just the fun parts, but also the parts that may not be as interesting or as exciting. And every job is gonna have those pros and cons. So it's really about what you're most interested in. All right, the last job on this list, that also happens to be the highest paid job on this list is a malware analyst who make on average about $155,000 per year in the US. Now, even though this is a niche area in cybersecurity, this is also a pretty broad title because there may be another job for malware reverse engineering or reverse engineering analyst. And that may also fall under this category, but because because we're basing this off of a career skill gap report, this is just the umbrella job term that is used. But just know that a lot of these job titles may have different nuances or one additional word or a few different ways to call it, depending on the company. Now, I'm sure this doesn't come as a surprise, but in the past few years, different types of malware and different ways of using malware has exponentially increased just with the number of nation state attacks rising, the rise of ransomware attacks. Based on a 2023 cyber threat report for the education and government sectors, ransomware attacks increased by 411% and 887% respectively. So there's been a very significant rise in the number of malware attacks. And that is another reason why companies are investing 
pretty large sums of money into reverse engineering malware, into understanding their attackers, potentially being able to identify the attacker, understanding what the attacker's goals are with that piece of malware, because it's not always obvious whether they're trying to destroy data, whether they're trying to siphon data, or maybe they're just trying to crash and shut everything down. So there's a lot of different reasons that attackers may use malware in different cases. And by reverse engineering malware, that also helps malware researchers, which again, I'm terming under this umbrella of a malware analyst to help create new tools to protect against or mitigate against those or similar types of malware based on the things that they learn from the malware that they reverse engineer. So very interesting stuff if you're interested in going into the nitty gritty. And it also helps having coding skills for this because malware can be written in many different coding languages. And even nowadays, the more common languages that malware used to be written in isn't as popular anymore because attackers know that if they write malware in Go versus C or Java, there's just less people in the world who may be as familiar with Go compared to C and Java. So it makes more sense to the attacker to start writing malware in Go, which is a big reason why malware written in Go has become more popular in the last few years because there are potentially less malware researchers or malware analysts who may be familiar with Go. And again, as a malware analyst, you're likely also doing a lot of documentation based on your findings and you're probably writing a lot of reporting in a different way compared to pen testers. But, but I would say a lot of this comes down to writing as a researcher and, and as if you were writing for a published report. So this is definitely an area of cybersecurity that intersects with many different skill sets. And you'll see that for the jobs in cybersecurity or any role, to be honest, if the job requires you to have many different skill sets, whether it be coding, reverse engineering, digital forensics, documentation, scripting skills in various different scripting languages, knowing how to use in-depth reverse engineering tools or any other security tools that you need, a malware analyst is an overlap of many, many different areas and niches, not just in cybersecurity, but also in software engineering, just general scripting, and even potentially in many different coding languages. That is the reason why they're paid so much for what they do. Okay, so hopefully this video was helpful to you. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other questions I can help answer. And don't forget to also join our Discord channel and feel free to connect on LinkedIn if you're interested. I share a lot more real-time cybersecurity career resources on there. A lot of them are also free if you're interested. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully these videos are helpful. And if you have any video suggestions that you would like to see from me in the future, feel free to drop them in the comments below and I will add them to my video backlog that is slowly dwindling down actually i've been i've been really getting through my videos so i'm glad that you guys are liking them from what it seems so if you have any overall feedback for the channel feel free to drop that in the comments as well i would love to hear from you thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like the video if it was helpful and subscribe i post videos weekly and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye